Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another Supercoach Ramble. We're just going to be going through God knows what. Just um, I'm on my desk, got the laptop out. And I'm just going to work through and basically think out loud, have a look at my side. Um, I'm uploading a video at the moment, sort of my Simpkin versus Rowl uh, proposition for this year. Putting my pills right on the line, so... If you don't know what that's about, then go have a look at that video. But basically, I've uh, pumped up my boy Simpkin all pre-season. I'm sticking with him. And Matty Rowell, who is the absolute fan favourite, I'm pinning them up against each other. And hey, if I go down, then things are going to get interesting. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge if we get there. Let's have a bit of a look at my side. Not that you can see it, but uh, a couple of bits and pieces that... Well, I actually... Haven't checked it for a couple of days, which is unusual. Um, not much has really been happening. Sort of a few little pracky games and intra clubs and stuff like that, but nothing to really make me want to switch up my side or whatnot. Um, old mate, young fella from St Kilda, he's coming to my side. Tom Highmore sent you know a few injuries at the Saints. Sounds as if he's definitely you know looking the good so far. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think Granger Barras, I think he would have been in my side last time I did an actual video. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So it's all pretty similar. I know, I reckon I might have had Dow in my forward line. And uh, one of Langer's mates, shout out to my good man Langer's. He said uh, he's a Carlton fan, this fella he works with. And uh, he is he, quite sure that... My good friend Paddy Dow won't get a game first up. So, look, for the minute, we're just going to make a couple of arrangements. What do we got here? I think I'll bring in Finn McGuinness, um, the young Hawk. I reckon he'll get quite a bit of opportunity. And I feel as if the Hawks will be looking to give that opportunity. You know how some clubs are sort of genuinely looking to win every game, best 22, probably favouring the experience, know what they're going to get, where... There are clubs who are probably going to slightly favour the, oh, you know, these two guys are 50-50, but let's go with the youth because that's the direction we're going. Um, and I reckon that's what Hawthorne is at the moment. Let's um, let's just chuck in some random unit in the forward line in place for Dow at the moment, and then um, then we can just grab Bianco, I guess, out of the, out of the middle. And McGuinness, where's he at? He is at 195. Bit of a big bodied type of mid, which I quite like. Um, and I just saw that Chad Wingard is in doubt for round one too, so it's got to help his cause a touch. Uh, I guess full disclosure, it is Wednesday at the moment, so hopefully by the time I post this, probably Thursday or Friday, hopefully everything's you know still fresh and that. I know last time I did a video, and you know by the time I posted it, bloody Marshall was out. Proust went down, so all of a sudden it became a bit um, irrelevant in a way. But um, I also wanted to sort of touch on... Oh, before I touch on that, I've got 34k just sitting in the bank. Um, a little water break. But the 34k, I mean, there's probably... I mean, there's no real reason to lose sleep over that. But sometimes there is, you know, some rookies that might be a touch more expensive than your your actual rookie price you know those higher end draft picks i always like to sort of just have a little look just to see if you can sort of strengthen up i mean you got Lockie jones there in the back line bit of talk about him but i also read a quote the other day you know just you know saying he'd definitely be a chance to get games throughout the year whether it would be round one we'll have to wait and see heath chapman at the dockers he's certainly a guy that is really putting his case forward at the moment, um, if we move into the midfield, what do we got in terms of slightly more expensive guys? Whoops, scrolled too far. Um, Tom Powell seemed to be impressing for. The ruse, but that's about all in terms of I can't really reach too much further than that with with 34k. What about the forward line? Will Kelly, 
he's a bit of a likely type. I reckon the Pies might look to give him some opportunity. And then we sort of start to, yeah, move beyond that 150k mark, which is, you know, when you've only got 34k free, you probably don't have too much to work with. But yeah, no, that's interesting. So sometimes it's just a bit of fun to, to have a look. Um, nothing too serious. But yeah, I wanted to discuss a bit more of a philosophical super coach angle. Um, and I guess that's what we do pre-season is, is solely built around you know, which guys are going to score well for us, which guys might provide some value, um, which rookies are going to play. And, and, you know, it's all really centred around that. And I guess it's interesting to look at the bigger picture. You know, that's that's a bit of a forecast to how we're going to score in round one. <clears throat> but, I mean, the real fact is how we're going to be scoring by round 16 and onwards, you know, when a lot of people and a lot of coaches are going to be having, if all's gone to plan, a team of premiums. So, I mean, you can't understate how important it is to pick guys with value and to nail your rookies and that sort of thing. But I often stress that your most important selections are your premiums, getting your premiums right now. You'll you'll look through your side and, and have a version of a premium and and some guys you might hope turn into a premium. And I guess a premium is a guy that you keep for the whole year. You know, he's a keeper. You don't have to worry about him, don't have to touch him. So if I'm speaking in the bigger picture, there's 22 blokes on the field. You've got 30 trades. More often than not, you need to start with at least 10 absolute genuine premiums, you know. No questions asked unless there's an absolute crazy bit of misfortune, whether it be an injury or a totally unexpected drop-off in form. Um, and the reason I sort of mentioned the trades and that type of thing, if you break the trades down, you got 30 of them, which is insane. I mean, that is ridiculous. I remember when I first started Supercoach, and I'd be really interested to see you know, how many long-time super coaches there are out there, we got 20, 20 trades. I remember they, when I was in high school, they were like bloody gold. I remember when you hit that trade button, oh, shit, you wanted to make sure you were 100% on that. And that was also back when you couldn't reverse trades. Oh, the amount of times I had mates come into school and go, oh, shit, I traded on Tuesday, and now the teams have come out and it screwed me over. So, I mean... There is a lot going for us these days. I, I don't know why they lifted to 30. I reckon it went 20. Then it went to 24. I reckon 24 is probably like a good number. I, f I still feel like 30. You know, you can still make some mistakes and still have a bit up your sleeve. I guess the reason they have 30 is because trading and an ability to, to improve your side is probably what keeps your mug um, punter going. You know, like, all of us out there who really love the game and, and study it hard, you know, we can we can really plan our trades and that type of thing, but I feel as if to keep the majority interested and and still give people hope and keep people interested for as long as they can, because so often I'm sure, um, you know, the super coach bosses who created and everything probably acknowledge that when people tend to run out of trades, they probably run out of interest. So I presume that's why we get so many as well um but anyway that's a little off topic point being 30 trades let's break it down that is in theory you're probably gonna you're probably gonna need six to ten to use on injuries or or selection based things um stuff you don't expect emergency trades you know you'd hope you wouldn't have to use ten but more often than not, you're going to at least use six. So I guess if you're going to require, say we start with 11 premiums in our side, that's going to require you roughly 11 downgrades to get the coin and then a further 11 upgrades. You know, I like to call them double trades because often you'll see 
you know, when we get going in the season, you'll get a rookie who's appreciated to 312,000. You downgrade him to some rookie who's on the bubble, about to go up in price after playing two games. He's at 123. You pocket that 190K. And then you've got, you know, some other rookie that's, you know, gone up to 334. He's traveling nicely, but he's break even. That's pretty high. It's time to offload him. Let's do a little upgrade. So we've got that 190k there. And then, oh, g'day, there's some slightly fallen premium at, I don't know, 530, 540. And we can just snap him up. There is your double trade. Downgrade, upgrade. You've just turned a rookie who's gone up in value to a premium who's maybe just had a couple of down weeks, but you still rate him or, or maybe, you know, had a concussion in the second quarter and he's got an injury-affected score. And all of a sudden, you can snap him up with a bit of value so that is the double trade getting worked out in its finest um, and I guess the fact is over the journey you know you might be able to save yourself a downgrade here and there you know you might get some rookies that just absolutely go nuts and and as you as you go through the year you, you might be able to create one downgrade to equal two upgrades you know sometimes that can happen you know, it often takes an injury-affected score from a premium to, you know, to score like a 12 or something that's, you know, had them injured and off the ground early in the game and then they come back after a week and their score and, and their price really plummets. You know, that's probably an example. But as a general rule of thumb, it almost works out 50-50. You almost always need roughly the same amount of downgrades as upgrades. But let's put that theory into practice right now with my side so i'll go through the undoubtable premiums you know the, the ones that you you just can't argue in my mind but i'm sure some people may well argue them so in the back line let's count them up we got laird we've got zach williams and i'm counting callum mills you know on his numbers last year he was premium and I don't see that changing. You know, maybe it's a slightly more risky one, but we're counting that. So that's three premiums in the back line. Midfield, Neil, Oliver, Kelly, and Cripps. Make that four, that's seven total. Then I've got Grundy in the ruck, that's eight. And in the forward line, I've got Dangerfield and Martin, which is ten. So... If you want to work out the, the maths and the dynamics there, you know, I'm probably, to require my side being 22 premium players, you know, I need to add 12 premiums. So, you know, that is, again, if we're working out the double trade theories, that's probably 24 trades that I've got to use to attain that. And that leaves me with, like, six emergency trades, you know, trades to, to use when a guy goes down for an extended time. And that type of thing. So I guess that is that is the hard sort of facts in that regard. But if you look at it in some variables, now of those 10 premiums, there might be one or two that actually turns out to absolutely give me a headache. You know, one may not come on and deliver. One may end up being, you know, doing a long-term injury after four rounds and, and I might have to change it. So... And there is also on the flip side a more positive angle where maybe there can be a couple of guys that go from, okay, they're not proven premiums at the moment, but once we get going, they actually are. So I guess in my team, you look at Jai Simpkin and you probably look at, say, Cameron Rayner at the moment, and particularly Simpkin. You know, I'm picking him with the clear mindset of him being in my side for the whole year. I've got Tom Green in there. I would highly doubt he'd be in my side all year. He's probably a guy that I think's got a nice mix of scoring ability and value, but I still need to see it in a pracky game, you know, how much mid-time he's going to get. And look, the Rainer selection, yeah, 100%, that's risky. Um, but if you've watched my videos throughout the preseason, you'll understand the lack of faith I have in the forward line. Um, don't really like side bottom. Marshall's injured. Not a fan of starting with Dunkley. And then once you're not going with any of the big five, well, then you can just pick it out of a hat. You know, you can just about go anybody. 
So I've found a little bit of value there. And, and look, it's it's the 24th of February. Like, let's not go hard and fast on selections just yet. I mean, basically 90% of what we do is made off the back of practice games and, and intra clubs and that type of thing. Like, yeah, we know what the premiums are going to do, but realistically, the rest of them, the rookies, the maybe the mid prices, the breakout contenders, everything we think gets confirmed, or 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 actually the other way, you know, um, once we actually see it in practice games. So, I guess let's say Simkin and Rayner do lift their averages quite nicely you know rain has probably only got to lift it above 90 and if he does get unleashed in the midfield then look out that's a genuine possibility you know i could be looking at 12 premiums and therefore i just got to add 10 to the side um i would say if you're just playing the percentages and playing the odds you know probably one of them will you know and i'd be happy with that if one of them worked out i think you'd take it um that's just that's just probably how it works, but um, and then in terms of like those two guys are probably the ones that are in that more expensive range where you probably go, oh, okay, you probably need to be a premium. But I've also got some guys who aren't cheap as chips, but also aren't that expensive. You know, I mentioned Tom Green. I've got Hayden Young at two eighty in the back line. I reckon he's one of the best selections of the year. I think we'll be raving about his left boot after the first few weeks. I don't reckon too many people know the name Hayden Young at the moment, but in about a month or two, they definitely will. I've got Jordan Clark at 240k from the Cats. I really think he's a special player, and if Geelong, if he makes a position his own, because there's a spot there for him, I think he'll score and I think he'll be good. But equally, he could he could not play. So... Again, we'll await the teams. Um, like I said, I've got McGuinness in there at 195. I've got Sam Draper in the ruck at 380k, and that's probably one that, yeah, he's he's going to hopefully be a stepping stone, um, which could burn me, could not, we'll see. And you've got Jack Siebel at 257 in the forward line. I think he's a really just solid selection. You know, saw some highlights of him in the match sim the other day intra club whatever it was for north and just looked really at home you know the back line few intercept marks and he and luke mcdonald sort of seemed to team up quite quite nicely so i think it's just an easy selection if he's fit i think he's just going to score solidly you know i i wouldn't expect those 90 plus averages which he has produced over the time but at least 80 is very achievable i reckon i mean it's a it's an absolute bruise-free sort of position that halfback. You know, he'll be he'll be the general down there. He'll be direct and play. He'll just he'll just find easy kicks, easy uncontested marks. He'll just find a, a lot of easy points. So at that price, I see next to no risk. But so there definitely is a few guys in that sort of range where um, you know that there's a little bit of awkwardness, but. Yeah, probably the proof will be in the pudding, won't it? Um, but I think that's probably where I'm where I'm looking at the minute. You know, probably needing at least eleven double trades, and and like I said before, you're probably all going to plan. You hope that you hope you get a few premiums that sort of fall a bit, and you hope that the timing's all right. You hope that your rookies go up very nicely. You hope they all keep their spot after four, five, six, seven rounds. I mean that's the perfect world. It doesn't always happen. Um, yeah, but I think that's certainly what we want to be doing. But at the minute, I'm I'm pretty happy with my side. I'm pretty content with it. You know, we've still got twenty odd days to go to the first bounce. It's come up pretty quick. I don't know about you, but I reckon it's come up really fast. Um, but I really have settled on, you know, for a while, the forward line kind of did my head in. Um, but yeah, at the minute, you know, sort of having Dangerfield and Martin, I feel pretty good about. My most iffy selection in the whole side is is probably Cameron Green, uh, sorry, Cameron Rayner, and also Tom Green to a lesser extent, and for different things. I think Tom Green, I'm I'm much more confident in his ability to score. It's just 
so awkward that price you know it's 350 it's it's just cheap enough i reckon it's just cheap enough i mean he has the ability to, to score some huge numbers you know there's a lot of clayton oliver about him you know young guy plies his trade in that first year looks the goods and then explodes i think it's just a matter of the giants give him that opportunity i think you look through that side how many inside mids are there like you've got Canelio, you've got taranto um let's bring up bring up the side um because i don't reckon i reckon he's their third best inside mid for such a young guy i reckon he's got to like when i look at him like he's he's got to play like the giants got to do something different i reckon he's got to play and he's got to play inside who have they got you know you got josh kelly he's probably slightly more outside taranto i mentioned perryman um DeBoer, if they choose to play him hopper I, I left out hopper and if they play cal ward i guess but yeah um yeah i, I see tom green definitely in the side and, and definitely in a lot of center bounces so i i that's why he's in there I, I mean i think he's worth having in the side at the moment and you know if i feel like i get a little bit of cold feet i can always take him out I suppose Draper does give me a few nerves, but I mean, put it this way: it's it's either a mid pricer or it's Gorn to to accompany Grundy. And for me to get Gorn, I mean, how much is he? He's like seven fifty. I mean, for me to get him in, you're gonna have to do some drastic changing. Like, let's get the old. Uh, calculator out so i've got 34 in a bank take that away from from gorn oh, great when you don't have num lock on that's cool 717 take away draper 339 so you still got to fork out 340k that would be like it'd just be absolutely stripping my side of depth i reckon like that would be probably the equivalent of um well, Green would have to go. I'd have to just take that straight down to a rookie. That would give me like 230 and leave me with, what did I say, 340. So I'd probably have to find like another 110 somewhere. And I would probably either downgrade Granger Barras and McGuinness to create that or flat out Jordan Clark. So, you know, it's like, do you want Gorn? Well, yeah, of course he's gonna he's a superstar, but all right, well, you gotta get rid of um you know, Green and Clark or Green and Grange Brass and McGuinness, you know, like it just means that you're a little bit more vulnerable in terms of having rookies on the field and you take away a couple of guys that I really fancy. I really fancy a couple of those guys. So I guess that's that's what you're thinking about in the end. That's what it comes down to. And yeah, I guess probably what I was originally saying was probably Rayner. If I just have a little bit of a look, and like I said, that in my opinion, there's a big five, and if you choose two of those, then the question is, who's your F three? And let me just, you know, let me just go through who it is: Walters, Zorko, Dixon, Gray, Butters, Bolton, Laddams, Heaney, Wingard, Toby Green, Jack Martin, Kane Lambert. Gunston, oh Bruce, God, we're getting to the trash now. I mean, you tell me, who have you got at F three? Because I, I, I think Walters is going to play too much forward. Same with Zorko, you can't play Dixon. You couldn't do Gray, Butters. You know he's exciting, but I'm not sure he's got the absolute um, reliability, consistency just yet. Bolton, yeah, he he's a very likely type. He's probably the front runner of that pack that I just mentioned. Laddams. Heaney, you know what I think about Heaney, I bloody love the bloke, for God's sake, could we just play him in the midfield, horse, goodness me, you're killing me son, but you know, all the talk at the moment remains that he is playing forward, you know, or at least the majority forward, which is not what we want, Wingard, like I said before, a bit of injury around, couldn't play Toby Green, and and then you know, we're, we're down to sort of 440, 430, um, to goey surely you wouldn't and then you then you know you get down to 415 still nothing that sexy uh, tommy phillips you know he's probably getting a bit of attention 
you know, whatever. And then and then at three ninety two at Cam Rayner. So I know he seems a long way down, but in terms of the pecking order, he's he's actually not. There's a lot of those guys between four hundred k and five hundred k. I just reckon a trash. Connor Rosie is a guy that I put on the radar pretty early, and his ownership has bumped up a lot. There's a lot of talk about him, so I guess he's probably another guy that I might consider and. At the end of the day, it's just going to come down to the position, you know, which one of those guys is going to get more midfield time, and it's a tough one, you know, Rain has been in the system a bit longer, I think they're very different sorts of players, I still think Rosie, I don't reckon he's the sort of guy who's going to, you know, crack into packs and and bust them open and, and bullock their way through where Rayner is, where Rosie's probably the sort of guy who who might have the ball fed to him by a Wines or a Rockcliffe, and he's probably going to dance around and use his tricks a little bit more. And when he does read it off the Ruckman's tap, he's probably going to sidestep and evade. You know, he's at least my read on him, he's, he's not so much. When you picture them winning the clearance, I picture Rosie's sort of sidestep, you know, explosive speed, um, where Rayner... While he's got that explosive speed, once he's out, I see a, f- a few more guys hanging off him, you know, hands above the shoulders, feeding off a handball. You know, I see him doing a bit more grunt work, and it's really hard to say. It just depends how they go about it in terms of structuring up their side. You look at Port Adelaide, you know, but both of these teams are good teams. You know, Port and Brisbane, top four contenders. So they're not easy midfields to just waltz into. you got Rockcliffe. You got Boak, you got Wines, you know, they are stars of the game. And then you've you've got guys like Dursme, you've got Pal Pepper, you've got Butters, you've got Rosie, you know, you've got is Dan Houston gonna get in there at times? Um, Robbie Gray will probably occasionally run through there. So it's just a matter of those guys who are in the mix. Then what's the mix? You know, that, that's probably what we need to know because I can tell you, oh yeah, piece of cake, yeah, Dersmer will go in there, yeah, cool, Amon will go in there, yeah, whatever, Butters, yeah, he'll go in there too, yeah, cool, I know that, <laughs> but who's going to be in there the most? When the game's on the line, is Rosie going to be hanging out in a half forward flank or is he going to be in the middle? You know, where's he stand? What's his pecking order? You know, he kicks six in some intra club game, which. It's always hard to read into, you know, I'm not sure that six goals is the equivalent to a six, you know, in, in a normal game, but still, it's a bloody good performance. Is that great? Did he kick a few from the midfield? Was he playing four? You know, the talk is he's going to play more mid-time, but we do hear that a lot. And then you go over to you go to Brisbane, um, and, you know, you, you've got Lions, you've got Neil, you've got McCluggage, probably more out onto a wing. Um, and then you've got, um, who else have you got in there? You've got Jared Berry. They've got Mitch Robinson, but surely not. Surely Mitch's days of playing senior footy are pretty numbered. So, look, honestly, I I think it goes Neil, Lyons, and then I reckon Cam Rayner is right in there. I think Berry's a great inside mid, but I reckon Rayner's like three or four deep in terms of inside mids at the club. Um, I reckon McCluggage is a little bit more outside. Zach Bailey's probably a little bit more outside. Um, yeah, that would be really interesting to see how it all pans out. But, yeah, so that's probably that at the moment in terms of shaking up who exactly gets those mid-minutes. But there are a few players in there, don't get me wrong, that are speculative and, and could come back to absolutely burn me and, and bite me in the ass. But, look... I, I almost feel like taking a bit of a punt, you know. I almost feel like rolling the dice with a couple of these guys, you know. I, I like the idea of just having a bit of you against me with the Simkin and Rowell stuff. It's a bit of fun, you know. I quite enjoy it. So that's how my team's faring at the moment. Like I said, these videos, are they are what they are. They're an absolute super coach ramble. I, I don't really know where they're going. I've always got a couple of points I want to touch on. But they're a bit more of a laid-back kind of video. How long have we been going for so far? I think we've been just about ticked over to the half hour. So they tend to be just naturally sort of going for about half an hour, which is good. Um, Because I reckon, you know, I sort of envision these as a, I guess, a medium where you can kind of just chuck it on in the background. You know, maybe you 
maybe you're cooking up some dinner, you're going for a drive, and you know, a lot of my videos these days are a uh, visual medium, and you know, probably between the seven to 12 minute mark, um, where hopefully this is something, because I know I like to just have something on, you know, when I'm either cooking or, you know, got a bit of a drive, or I'm just, you know, you guys know me, I, I love to go for a drive down the coast and just sit somewhere, and I like to kind of have a bit less of a, you know, hard hitting, you know, sort of discussion point, more of just a, a ramble where, you know, you can you can tune in for five minutes intently, you can go do something for a couple of minutes and you probably haven't missed much, you know what I mean? So hopefully these are being well received in that regard because I quite like I quite like doing them. You know, they're pretty laid back. I'm just sitting here in my trackies, just, you know, I'm still uh still just getting the day underway to be fair. Um it's a pretty chill morning. So yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I reckon we'll probably just wrap it up there. There wasn't anything else I really wanted to cover off on and, and there's nothing too pressing at the moment, to be fair. So, yeah, thanks again for tuning in and, and thanks for all your support too over the, not just this year, but the years because i um, been doing this channel for a bit now and I still get some really regular contributors through the comments and I'm sure there's stacks of people who've been watching for years now that are, you know, I don't even know about. So that's really good. And, and if you've come on board in the last few weeks too, you know, that's fantastic. Great to have you on board and, and hopefully you'll be on the journey for, for the years to come as well. Cause I know I, I really like doing these videos and you know, it's, it's not about breaking any records on the subscribers or, or the views, but it is great to get some interaction and, um, you know, particularly when we start getting to footy games and that sort of thing, you know, I love it when you're sort of out and about and then people come up and say g'day. It's sort of, that's what really reinforces, you know, to, to do it really because there have been times over the years where I'm like, oh, you know, it wouldn't really matter if I just didn't do it, you know what I mean? Um, but it really does, yeah, make my day when people come up and, and say that they love watching my videos and, you know, not that I'm a celebrity, it doesn't happen all that often, but it does, when the every now and then occasion it does, it just makes you go, gee, if there's five or ten people out there who are sitting back going, geez, I can't wait for the next video, then that's enough, you know, that's that's great. And, and there's probably there's probably a few more out there too, to be fair, which is which is really cool. So um again, yeah, whether you're new, old, been around for a little while or whatnot, I really appreciate your support because gives me a great hobby and it's great to sort of have an outlet for something I love too you know sometimes just talking a bit of super coach uh, kind of scratches the itch that I've got going on too because I love talking about it and and you know it's great that you guys love to listen and love to get involved and give some feedback too so um, there's a little bit more ramble for you but yeah thanks again I'll chat to you guys soon we've got a few more videos coming up I'm actually going to put my laptop in to get fixed the screen's basically fucked it's it's not um not opening and shutting uh overly smoothly so i need to get that fixed so i'm just trying to schedule a few videos um towards the back end of the week and hopefully they don't need it over the weekend so um nonetheless i'll be back soon cheers